hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we will be looking into how authentication and authorization work in a microservice architecture what problems do we face when performing authentication and authorization in microservices and what could be the best possible solution to authentication and authorization in microservices let's get started Let us first understand that how does authentication and authorization work in a monolithic architecture. In authentication, we verify who the user is. So we use their username and password for authentication. On the other hand, in authorization, we try to find what the user can do, such as if the user is permitted to create, read, update or delete the files they are requesting for authorization comes after they are authenticated in monolithic architecture when the user logs in the application security module authenticates the user's identity after verifying that the user is legitimate a session is created for the user and a unique session id is associated with the session a session stores login user information such as username role and permission the server returns the session id to the client the client records the session id as a cookie and sends it to the application in subsequent request the application then can use the session id to verify the user's identity without entering a username and a password for authentication each time. When the client accesses the application, session ID is sent to the application along with the HTTP request. The security module generally processes all received client requests through an authorization interceptor. The interceptor first determines whether the session ID exists. If the session ID exists, it knows that the user has logged in. Then by querying the user rights, it is determined whether the user can execute the request or not. Now, before moving to the actual solutions to microservices authentication and authorization, let us discuss some of the problems that we face in microservices authentication and authorization. In the microservices architecture, the authentication and authorization logic needs to be handled in each microservice. And this part of the global logic needs to be implemented repeatedly in each microservice. Although we can use the code base to reuse part of the code this will cause all microservices to depend on a particular code base and its version, affecting the flexibility of the microservice language or framework selection. The other problem is that when sending an HTTP request, HTTP is a stateless protocol. So for the server, each time the user's HTTP request is independent. Stateless means that the server can send client requests to any node in the cluster as needed. The stateless design of HTTP has obvious benefits for load balancing. Now, because there is no state, user requests can be distributed to any server. For services that do not require authentication, such as browsing news pages, there won't be any problems. However, many services such as online shopping and enterprise management systems need to authenticate the user's identity. Therefore, it is necessary to save the user's login status in a manner based on the HTTP protocol to prevent the user from needing to perform verification for each request. The traditional way is to use a session on the server side to save the user state. 
Now because the server is stateful, it will affect the horizontal expansion of the server. So now what could be the recommended solution to authentication and authorization in microservices? For microservices to work, there needs to be a way for client applications to authenticate with the API. There are many methods for authenticating APIs, but the best possible method could be to use JWT or JSON Web Tokens. With JWT, there is a common framework for creating access tokens that will store a small data payload. Using our framework or a particular programming language, we can create a simple access token microservice that can be used by our other microservices as an authentication platform. Let us discuss the various steps involved in this process. The first step is to authenticate with an API using a client ID and a client secret. First, the client application needs to authenticate with the framework. It does this by passing a client ID and a client secret. The client ID is essentially a user ID here and the client secret can be considered as the password. We will need to secure the secret within our application. To add more security, it would make sense to salt or hash the client secret in our authentication before we take the token server to the production. The next step is to create an access token and return the token to the client application. Once the client ID and client secret have been authenticated and any authorization metadata has been returned from the database, we can create a JSON web token. Using the JSON web token package from NPM, we will sign the token with the client's authorization metadata payload and our private key. The token information is then passed back to the client application in the token server API response. The third and the last step is to verify the access token. When the client application wants to use a resource, we will need to verify that the client's token is valid. The token is passed to the token server to be verified. If it is successful, an appropriate response is relayed to the client app with the relevant authorization metadata for the client. At this point, the client application can decide within its business logic to give access or not. So this was a very simple example implementation of an access token server. The client application in this example can be a microservice. Using this pattern, we can serve authentication to multiple microservices simultaneously, providing a form of SSO or single sign-on for our API framework.